Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Y'all all know this by now. I, uh, I, I get a lot of Chicago content headed my way because of my affinity for the baseball team on the north side there. And because of that, uh, I, catch some, I catch some Bears whiffs from now and again. Uh, and they're generally not very pleasant. <laughs> the, the folks uh, in the Windy City are not thrilled with their football team and really haven't been in a very, very long time. Uh, this is a season that Bears fans very much were anticipating. Because finally, they could look up and say, okay, we've got a quarterback that might be great. And for the first time in 30-plus years, Favre and Rodgers are not up north. They got Jordan Love. They might stink. They don't have a Hall of Famer playing quarterback anymore. This is our time to rise up and seize control of the NFC North. We don't have to worry about the Lions. They always stink. Nobody trusts the Vikings in January. The Packers quarterback dynasty is over. This is the time for us to show up and play. And they promptly took the field in the season opener and got hammered by said Packers in Soldier Field. And it's really been pretty poor ever since. You look up, and this is a 2-6 and six team with significant quarterback issues. They were trying to sing the praises of Badgett last week as a quarterback savior from D2 instead of the Heisman finalist in Justin Fields. It's bad in Chicago, okay? But they did make a move this week. Yesterday, to be exact. And they brought in Montez Sweat. Shipped off a second rounder. They got a lot of draft capital. Got a couple of early first-round picks. They're trying to, to sign a player to help them in the short term, but more so to extend him long-term as a pass rusher. Since they got rid of Roquan Smith in the first fire sale, the Bears really haven't had anybody to rush the passer. That's evidence in the fact that they are dead last in the NFL in sacks this year. They have got 10 in eight games. And you could say, and I thought, like, well, they probably don't face as many pass attempts as other teams because they're always losing and teams are probably trying to run the ball. Maybe that's the reason. Nope, not true. Only four teams have faced more pass attempts in the NFL than the Bears this year and still only 10 sacks in eight games. There is not a single player on the Bears roster with more than two total sacks on the season this year. So they go get Montez Sweat. He's got 35 and a half sacks in his career in Washington since 2019. Of course, a product of Mississippi State. We know him well down here in the Southeastern Conference. And this year, he's got six and a half sacks on the season. He's got 10 tackles for loss. He is an upper tier pass rusher in the NFL. Is he T.J. Watt or one of the Bosa brothers? No. Is he a, a, a high-end pass rusher in the NFL? He is. And he's going to be ready to roll on Sunday in the Dome. We understand what the Saints offensive line has been this year. When it was healthy, it stunk. When it got hurt, it was even worse. And they tried to patch some holes. They bring in free agents. They're trying to move people around, figure out where things need to be. And they were a little bit better last week in a win. And they weren't awful against Jacksonville, quite frankly. They weren't awful. They weren't great, but they weren't awful. They were a little better last week. You go on the road, get a nice win in Indy. Now you come home. And you thought, as of 26 hours ago, that, okay, well, we're going to face the worst pass rush in the NFL. Our offensive line is playing a little bit better. That's really all we need because... Derek Carr can throw for 300 yards. He throws for 300 yards all the time. You've got Chris Olave who can make plays, and Michael Thomas has been okay, and we've got this new toy in Rashid Shahid that's been really, really good at making plays down the field. Like, as long as we don't have to worry about the disruptive pass rush, like, we're okay. And the Bears have the worst one in the league. So this is going to be a great opportunity for us on our home field to get the offense going. And then Montez Sweat gets at it. You're going, okay, well. We'll see. Andrews Pete's probably going to be at left tackle. Ryan Ramchick ready to go at right tackle. I haven't seen the injury report today. That's the bad part about the time of day of my show is that the injury report comes right when I'm getting off the air. But you figure those are going to be your two bookends, and Montez Sweat's going to be lined up against those guys a lot. You need Ryan Ramchick to play at a Pro Bowl level. That, that's that's got to be an expectation for him at this point. 
And Andrews Pete's just got to be okay. And he was okay last week. You need Derek Carr to understand that he's got a guy playing a little out of position on his on his left side. But I would imagine the Bears will take a look at this and go, do we want to send our, our new gadget here? Or, oh, we got this Montez sweat. Do we, do we want to send him against Ramchick on the quarterback's good side? Or do we want to put him over here? That's where Andrews Pete stands. And Carr can't see that way. Seems like that would be the more reasonable explanation. And that's what you should expect. Now, the question is, can the Saints block them and can the Saints score some points? The Chargers dropped 30 on this team. Denver, who's not good on offense, scored 31 on this team. Kansas City, pretty good on offense, scored 41. Tampa and Baker Mayfield, 27. Green Bay scored 38 in that game I mentioned to open the the segment. So this is a team that's given up a lot of points, that's given up a lot of yards, that hasn't really rushed the passer. Do you think one guy's going to fix all that? Probably not. Do we think morale's all that high in the Windy City? Probably not. Is this Bears defense, the 85 Bears, or even a good defense? It is not. The Saints should try to find some momentum in this game. It's a week-to-week league. And no, one win doesn't bleed over to the next, and one loss doesn't have to bleed over to the next. But the, the Colts game maybe was an inflection point for this season. Because if you lose that game in Indy and come back having lost three in a row and having lost five of six, the Dome crowd's going to turn on you. They just showed it in the Jacksonville game. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to allow these diehard Houdat fans to come in there and go, well, we did score 38 on the Colts. And we're at home. We got the Bears. And then next week, we, we got the Vikings, who don't have a quarterback. They just traded for Josh Dobbs. And then we got the Falcons. And I don't know what they're doing at quarterback. Like, this could be a, a spot to get in on a run. And then all of a sudden, the dome crowd comes to life. It's not wearing bags in their head and booing everybody. It's like, well, can we kind of take control of this division? It's It sounds crazy. It probably is crazy. I continue to think that the long-term health of the franchise might be on a little bit of thin ice. But the short-term doesn't have to be. This Bears team stinks, and I don't think Montez Sweat's going to change it. Tell Andrews Pete and Ryan Ramchek to keep him at bay for most of this game, and you ought to be able to go up and down the field, score some points, and you ought to be able to beat the Bears. Those are my my thoughts. Going to be Badgett again. You wouldn't imagine that you're going to need a lot of points to outscore him. The Saints should be in reasonable shape coming up on Sunday against the Bears. We shall see. It'll be a noon kickoff on CBS uh, from the Big Easy. Hey, it's Hunt. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. Leave your comments in the section below. And hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.